French. I am a um, professor of pediatrics at the University of Pennsylvania. Hi, I'm Dimitri Dukovny. I'm a neonatologist at Oregon Health and Science University, and I'm associate professor of pediatrics here. Hi, I'm Beverly Robin. I'm a neonatologist at Rush University Medical Center, and I'm also the program director of the Neonatal Perinatal Medicine uh, Fellowship. I'm Daphna Yasova Barbo. I'm a neonatologist uh, in South Florida. I am uh, Benjamin Korsha, and I am a neonatologist in South Florida as well. My name is Dwayne Persley. I'm Chief of Neonatology at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center uh, and a member of the Harvard Medical School faculty. My name is Greg Valentine. I'm a neonatologist, um, currently an assistant professor at, at the University of Washington in Seattle Children's um, and the University of Washington at, in Seattle, Washington. My name is Elizabeth Buonacea. I use she, her pronouns. I am an attending neonatologist at Nationwide Children's in The Ohio State. I'm Heather Burris. I'm a neonatologist in Philadelphia and a perinatal environmental epidemiologist uh, who spends a fair amount of time doing research. CHOP is a level four NICU, and HUP um, is a level three. Level four NICU. Uh, it's a level three. Yeah, we work in the same unit, so level three as well. <laughs> I spend my time practicing in a level four freestanding children's hospital unit, as well as a level three delivery unit that is based at the adult hospital at Ohio State. We have a combined level three and two facilities. Level three. But in Illinois, there is no level four, but we're considered a level three. I practice my time clinically at a, between a level three, four NICU. Uh, I work at a level four NICU. I am the director of neurodevelopment. So we do developmental care rounds. Um, I do some of our um, developmental follow-up, just ensuring that patients have access to all of the anticipated outpatient um, resources. I'm uh, uh, currently the Associate Fellowship Director, and I had uh, uh, just transitioned from being the Fellowship Director uh, uh, earlier this year, uh, and I'm uh, about to start the role as the Medical Director of the NICU, where we're all focused more on the operations and uh, clinical pathways. I am um, both an attending physician who does um, clinical work as well as um, I am also the fellowship director of the neonatal fellowship program at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. I've actually recently transitioned from a clinical scholar to a faculty scientist track. And so um, the majority of my time now is actually doing research. And, and so I have a, I've been fortunate to receive a K-23 and some additional grant support that supports um, a lot of clinical, uh, a lot of clinical trial work that's domestically and abroad, specifically in Malawi, to look at how to improve outcomes of children. I'm the uh, fellowship program director, so I am responsible for overseeing the fellowship. Um, I do a lot of teaching. I also run the simulation team in the NICU, so conduct uh, in situ simulations. I am the fellowship director here for the neonatal perinatal medicine program, as well as the director of the pediatric subspecialty fellowships for the institution. So I help organize all the education and program director training needs for the institution. And now I've shifted a lot of my non-clinical academic focus into workforce equity, which is an issue I'm very passionate about. So my main other role is as a researcher, which has so many facets. So I do, I do spend a fair amount of time writing, writing grants, writing manuscripts, a lot of time mentoring, which is really fun, um, and helping trainees get through their research projects. And I'm also uh, the neonatology, one of the two representatives for the well-being committee um, for the hospital. We do, we do several things, uh, both inside and outside the unit. I think the opportunities are there no matter what. And uh, for me, um, Outside the unit, I am an adjunct faculty at Nova Southeastern University uh, Medical School. 
Um, inside the unit, I run the chronic lung disease program of our team, and I'm uh, responsible for what's for neonatal innovation, looking at new tech and trying to see how we can implement that in our unit. And most importantly, obviously, we're doing with APNA the Incubator Podcast, which takes up a lot of our time. Um, it's a weekly show where we talk to neonatologists and other providers in and around the NICU and review some of the current evidence. Just, you know, caring for high-risk patients and supporting families, um, it, it, that's a great privilege, uh, and it's extremely rewarding. I, I chose academic medicine as an opportunity to maybe magnify the impact that might have in improving outcomes. I love the pathophysiology. I really, really enjoy taking care of the patients. I really love interacting with the parents and the families. I think it's a part of our job that really um, is something that requires a lot of effort and energy and it's really, I find, fulfilling. I also love doing procedures and um, being in an academic institution, I really enjoy teaching. Ultimately, I ended up selecting neonatal intensive care instead of pediatric intensive care because I really was just amazed by the resilience of babies. And, um, you know, the, the statistics show that for every single day that a baby spends in the NICU, they are more likely to be discharged to home. Whereas in other age groups and in adults, for every single day that a patient stays in intensive care, they're less likely to be discharged to home. So I, I really enjoyed being able to focus my energies on caring for a patient population that was most likely to survive um, because of that high degree of resilience that the patient population has. It's, it's fun to mix it up professionally, to have a, a week where you're caring for patients and writing, preparing for a conference and teaching or doing some advocacy work. One of the coolest things about the Incubator podcast and getting to really talk to lots of people in the community and is that I, there are lots of ways to do neonatology. And I think that when I was a trainee, I didn't understand that there were so many um, opportunities. And so I think that different things draw us each to neonatology. Um, but, you know, if there's an aspect of the work that you really like, there's a place that will let you do more of what you like and less of what you don't. I think one of the really beautiful things about NICU as a field is it really incorporates things that meet each different pediatric specialty and general practice really exciting. So we have really high acuity. We do procedures, we run resuscitations and codes. We also have a chronic care model for a lot of our patients. And there's a significant rapport that develops with families, both in acute crisis situations, but also in these very long hospital stays. And so really it's a specialty that allows you to do a lot of different things in wildly different practice settings. For me, my passion is global health. Any efforts focused on improving the care of small and sick newborns and or preventing preterm birth can make huge worldwide ramifications in a beneficial way um, for millions of people. And so neonatology is a career that can do just that. I really feel like neonatology has such flexibility in the type of career you can have and the type of setting. Um, and then it can also change over the course of a lifetime. So it might be that research right now and writing grants is right up my alley, but maybe when I'm 60, I might, you know, choose to look after some level two babies or even level one babies. And, you know, we can really kind of age in our career in kind of a, a really graceful way. The other thing about the kind of work that we do, uh, we're in private practice. So Theoretically, when we're off, we're off, and it has allowed us the opportunity and the time to really invest um, in the Incubator podcast, which um, is an opportunity I never saw coming. From an intellectual standpoint, it is uh, a very rewarding specialty. It's stimulating from an intellectual standpoint. It is intense from the fact that it's intensive care, and and sometimes, especially in pediatrics, that's, some, that's often an issue you... you in this field, you do have a chance to make an impact on somebody's life. What I often will do is I'll suggest to trainees who I mentor to talk with neonatologists in other areas, other academic institutions, 
I also like them to talk with neonatologists in community hospitals and other settings to get a broad sense of what the field is because it might not be well represented just in one institution. You always wonder when you're going into a field, especially intensive care, whether it's going to be very taxing and, and what kind of life you're going to be leading on a day-to-day -day basis. And neonatology has been great from the standpoint of, yeah, when you're on, you're on and it's and it's taxing physically and mentally, but there's a lot of downtime when you're off uh, service. The, the time of having two paths to a career where you have to pick academia or clinical practice, I think is long gone. I think this has become much more intricate and you can find so many different setups in academia and in private practice where you can find a package that involves clinical time and, and compensation as well, everything, this whole package to find something that you're truly, that truly fits you. For those people who are coming into the neonatology community, um, I think what I'd say is um, we have this group of bright, empathic, um, passionate, uh, brilliant, um, and inclusive people. Um, I think right now, um, neonatology is really moving at a faster rate than it ever was before. And it's a pretty new specialty um, and one that has always been um, on the innovative front. Well, there are so many different things that you can do uh, uh, within it, both uh, the diversity of the clinical practice, as well as the ability for the non-clinical work that we do, whether it's uh, uh, research, uh, 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 advocacy, medical education, uh, quality improvement, uh, administrative work, uh, pu the public health field. My best advice is to just keep an open mindset and also to really talk with uh, physicians who are in practice to really understand what types of environments you can ultimately work in. Um, one of the things that I love truly about neonatology is that we don't. Um, you can have a career that does not have outpatient clinic. So I only work in intensive care. And as a result, I'm able to kind of group my clinical time together so that I have extended periods of breaks where I'm not doing clinical work, where I can really focus on my other academic interests. So it does allow for a really fantastic work-life balance. Before you kind of count us in or count us out, make sure you get, um, you know, a lot of uh, different exposures. I think I would offer the advice that was offered to me. Pursue your passion. Pursue your passion. There's nothing better than waking up and looking forward to going to work.